Domo, all my fellow samurai out there. I'm Doos This Din, and I'm coming at you with another Samurai 8 Hachimaru Den chapter review. This time it's chapter 6, titled O Fated Samurai. And after the defeat of the golems blocking off the entrance to the safe house, Daruma is all too ready to teach Hachimaru his own brand of fighting style. And you know, Hachimaru is all too willing to get right into it. But, you know, Daruma starts off by ejecting that weird key spine thing from his body which i'm sorry that still looks like really creepy to me like th there's just nothing about that that i find appealing like uh but you know dharma uses this as basically like a powerpoint presentation to actually show off the various aspects of a samurai to Hachimaru. So it's another exposition dump! Yay! Cause literally that's all this series is amounting to at this point. Exposition, exposition, exposition. <laughs> I, I even love how Hachimaru is just like, whoa, you got a TV in his head. But, you know, Dharma goes on to explain that the various aspects that help to make a samurai strong are the samurai himself, um, the key holder, which is the pet, and this thing called a princess, which was never mentioned before. Like, after all the exposition we've had previously, and I'm thinking, okay, we're gonna really buckle down and clarify a few things, they introduce yet another story element into this series, and I'm just like, god damn it, will you stop for a moment and just let the information you've given us to this point actually breathe. Just, just please, just a little bit, just a little bit. But... You know, Dharma says, only with these three elements will a samurai fully truly realize themselves as a samurai. So, okay, fine, fine. Let's just get it out of the way, and let's just move forward with the plot. So, honestly, these three things have helped to just kind of impact samurai from time immemorial. And <laughs> Hachimaru is, like totally on the same wavelength as me as he starts kind of playing with the key within his body just in and out and in and out and in and out and just like yeah no ADHD I, I don't even blame you kid because with all the constant lectures you keep getting I'd have lost interest in hearing this crap as well but Dharma's just getting pissy, He's just like, you know, you gotta literally pay attention to this crap. It's life or death. If you want to learn anything, pay the fuck attention. <laughs> but, okay, so, you know, Samurai is called a key, and, you know, that's just a custom for them. And then you have the animal type holders, like uh, Hayataro, and, you know, that explains why the people back at Nanashi's Dojo kept calling him a samurai, a key samurai. So it's just like they are samurai with the power of the key within them and all that good stuff. And without a key holder, a samurai can't truly go into battle. You're a you're just a key holder, but you, you ju you're just a key samurai. But with a key holder, you're able to realize a lot of your greater potential. And it's only after the key holder gives away the bone hill so that the samurai can infuse it with their samurai soul. They're able to gain a sword that is able to really greatly, you know, cut things. They're, they're able to do true damage. And, you know, there's a great bond between those two beings. And Hayataro and Hachimaru already has this massive bond. But then Hachimaru asked the million dollar question, so uh, the princess, where is she? And then literally Dharma is just like, just yada yadas it away. It's just like, ah, you'll fi figure that out someday. And it's just like, no, no, you're going to explain this shit right here and now, goddammit. 
But then we get this tired ass explanation that, oh, a samurai can only gain true strength when he finds someone he wants to protect. And I'm just like, oh God, literally don't tell me you're basing a power system off of damsels in distress of all things. Like, God fucking damn it. I'm sorry, but this is one of the biggest pet peeves I've had in a lot of series that will literally treat female characters as if they're nothing but a burden to be protected. Like, no! No! Get out of the Stone Ages, guys! Actually make female characters who play an important role. I better not see this princess character being nothing but something to be protected and help boost the male character. Cause she didn't like, no! Stop that! Cut that shit out! Let females actually have important roles and be on the same wavelength or power scale as the male characters. I'm sick of this shit, man. But, you know, Dharma's just yada yada it away. It's just like, ah, you'll figure things out eventually. We'll f get into that later. Let's go about the bone hilt and all that stuff first and foremost. So, you know, Hachimaru's all in for learning that kind of stuff. He pulls the samurai soul out of his stomach, which will allow him to really, truly um, create his ultimate sword weapon. And Darma's just like, yeah, all swords will seem like, like they ain't even shit compared to what you got now. So it's just like, okay, that's cool enough. But, you know, you he has to first infuse it into the bone hill, and so Hachimaru's all for it, and his sword goes limp. Dick jokes, everyone. Dick jokes. <laughs> it's just like, oh, it's all limp and wobbly. Um, but Dharma's like, ah, eh, well, everybody's is like that at first. I'm just like, god damn it. <laughs> Like, of course he had to have a bit of a handicap. It's just, it couldn't be that simple. Of course, of course. But, you know, Hachimaru isn't too happy about this. But, you know, Dharma is just like, hey, well, why did you even want to go under training if you weren't going to listen? So, um... You know, Hachimaru explains he wanted to get stronger so his dad would realize he wasn't weak anymore and would allow him to explore the outside. And Dharma's just like, well, you're already outside. But Hachimaru says, eh, no, it's just, it, it's a matter of pride at this point. The kid just wants to prove himself to his dad so his dad will finally acknowledge that it's okay for him to go out and explore the world. But Dharma's just like, listen, he, you know, this you, samurai, the samurai thing ain't no joke. We're out here to protect the galaxy. We are literally out here guarding the galaxy because those guys are over with Disney and that, that ain't our bag. You know, so this is important. We're protecting planets and all this good stuff. And, you know, we're also protecting the princess. Ugh. Ugh. God damn it. Uh, and I'm going to be honest, I was kind of hoping the princess would be Nanashi. I was really hoping the princess would be Nanashi, but nah, nah it ain't. It ain't. And I am so upset about that. I am so salty about that. Because what was the point of establishing Nanashi if you weren't even going to bring his ass back? Like, no. You know, you made this whole big deal about Nanashi not choosing whether to be male or female or what have you. And it's just like, no, I don't want to do this rival thing. You know, if I, I would have liked them to be allies, travel together, gr gr grow closer and all that good shit. You know, maybe subvert some extra expectations and make Nanashi male but still a princess and stuff like that. Be interesting! Be fucking interesting! And Dharma, Dharma's just like, do you truly understand why we have to protect the princess? And he's just like, well, it's, it, you know, impacts us and gives us purpose and all this good shit. And like, honestly, why would Hachimaru know? Why, why would he know any deeper meaning? He's fresh into this crap. You know, Dharma's just really playing the cryptic game, but it's just like, dude, you're giving all this exposition already. Just spit it the hell out. But, you know, once... 
Hachimaru actually tries to, you know, talk to Dharma about like, hey, well, have you pre talked, have you protected a princess as well? Dharma completely just brushes it aside. And I'm just like, God damn it. Do we really have to do this? You're given all this other exposition and you're not, not just going to lay it all on the table right here and now? Because you're already doing it. Just keep going. Christ. Like, I mean, I'm sorry, I don't mean to sound very aggravated with this series, but I, I just feel like there's so much more potential than what I'm seeing right now. There, there's so much potential right here. I know Kishimoto ain't no fool, but it, he's really playing this game really, really poorly. And I'm just like, dude, you've had years of experience. Why is your beginning so just rushed? Like a soulless shill, like man, dude, come on. And then we, then we cut up to you know this ship flying above orbit. We see this legion of samurai with this one primary samurai with four zors, four samurai spirits protecting a princess. And I'm just like, the, the who the who the fuck are you? Who the fuck are you? Why should I care? Why do you matter? What what am I looking at right now? And. And apparently, apparently she's Princess Sa, which means a uh, rose or something like that. And, you know, she's remembering the first time she met her samurai. And she's like, oh, a new samurai has been born, but he's still young and useless and blah, blah, blah. And cryptic monologue, whatever, whatever, blah, blah. He's the youngest samurai. And he's, you know, he gained the crystal that was lost by our youngest member. And, you know, apparently that's relevant. Who was your youngest member? And then they questioned who the princess in training was. Who had the crystal? I'm just like, what? Training to beat prince? And so, damn it, why did y'all set this at a school? If y'all set this at a school or at the dojo to begin with, this exposition wouldn't feel so ham-fisted. And then we cut off to N, who is the damsel or the Hinata or what have you. Where, you know, she ends up being chewed out by, I guess, her senpai? Who is just like, oh, did you actually manage to lose your fateful key ball? You know, and something like that. So she lost the ball along the way, but it's just like, wait, then how does that... Because they're obviously making it so that it connects to Hachimaru. But how did she lose it in the first place that it ended up being gained by Hachimaru? And how does that connect the two of... I'm so lost on how these things add up. And then we get yet another exposition dump that she used it to pickle vegetables and then it ended up being lost that way. And it's just like, wh why would you do that? You know, they're making a big deal that she's in this princess school and it's just like, well, wouldn't she know the importance of this object? How could she just be so absent-minded to just use it for a mundane task as pickling vegetables? And then the... Her senpai starts chewing her out, and it's just like, well, that's kind of like, you know, using your, your wedding gift, or, you know, that locker ball is basically the, equals out to your faded samurai, it's just like, even children know that, it's just like, well, apparently she didn't, like, th this is one of those, as you know, yada, 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 it's just like, if you know this already, why are you explaining it, you shouldn't have to explain this, God damn it! And it's just like, ah, oh, it's the equivalent of having a boyfriend, you know? And it's just like, what? Is that how it works? It, it, no, it, that's not how love or romance or feelings should work out. Just, uh, I don't know. I don't know, man. Just kind of frustrating because she has this very, An has this very nonchalant attitude, and I. I can't blame her senpai for being so exasperated because it's just like this important device and you friggin lost the damn thing. And it's just like, what if it turns out that, you know, you end up with some, you know, loser or whatever. But I was just like, oh, no, that's OK. I have a very open mind. But it's just like, what if you end up in an abusive relationship? Shouldn't you be a little bit more worried about this? Like, this seems like a very important thing. But, you know, 
I was just like, oh, I just hope he's not too much of a chatterbot. Uh, he, as long as he just doesn't interrupt me and listens to what I have to say and blah, blah, blah. It's just like, uh, you know, this is a very cute girl. But man, y'all already made her out the gate feel very bland. Like, you're not doing anything that really makes me endeared to this character besides, well, she's cute. Like, and, you know, cute only gets you so far. Cute gets you pretty far in, like, stuff like k or, you know, Yuri y Yuri Yuri or something like that, where it's cute girls doing cute things, but this is a shonen. I'd like to see some more women of action and all that good stuff. And then Daruma finally gets around to at least trying to explain to Hachimaru what a princess is. And apparently they're capable of sensing other locker balls where that are very deep within the planet's core. And I'm just like, well, how did they do that? And I still don't actually know how having more than one locker ball impacts you in any way. You know, once you have the key and, you know, aren't you morphed out of the locker ball? And I, I still feel so lost on how all of this works. And then like, it's a star crystal, and it's used for creating samurai. And I'm like, again, why would you need more than one of them? You're already a samurai. Why, why would you need more? Why are you collecting them? No, is it all for the purpose of the gods or, you know, for saving the planet? Because only it seems like only Dharma so far knows of the actual goal of collecting the seven keys to unlock Pandora's box. And when are we going to get back on that? Uh, just, aren't we on like a time frame? Aren't you on this epic quest that you were sent on by your master? But, uh, you know, you need the, for, it's for manufacturing the forces needed to protect the planet. And it's just like, well, why? So, basically, you create your own army? Is that what's happening? I thought this was all about, we were just going to be dealing with seven individual samurai, but apparently there's armies of samurai involved now and even Hachimaru's just like wait there's more <laughs> like oh god how, how much exposition can you be but you know Dharma's just like oh well there's always a single samurai and you know it's with a princess that you're able to gain invincible power and you know with a samurai and a princess they're able to create courage which I'm just like I feel like you're alluding to something deeper than just that metaphor, but but you still ain't laying all the cards on the table. It's just like you can't be cryptic and drop exposition all within the same goddamn chat. Oh, I'm done. I I'm so done with this chapter right now. I'm literally about to have a brain aneurysm. I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Don't get me wrong. I do not hate hate this it's just frustrating it's frustrating as all shit you know, just mm, mm. you know Hachimaru hasn't even gotten his freaking dick hard yet <laughs> and I'm still like god damn it are you it's just gotta put it in or are you just gotta keep fondling for really <laughs> seriously you know these chapters aren't bad they're not they're really not it's just everything feels too complex and you're giving me too much too fast. It's like you're explaining the friggin' tail beast, infinite Tsukuyami, the sage of the sixth path, Kaguya, Indira, uh, Ashura, and it's just like you're giving me all of this within the first goddamn ten chapters of Naruto. Like, will you chill the fuck out? I really need you to chill the fuck out. Just please give me time to just get a handle on how this world works. You know, don't give me the goddamn tutorial level within the first hour of the freaking game, drop everything that I need to know, and expect me to have retained it by the time we get to the fifth level, because I will have no clue what the shit I'm doing. I'm just so frustrated. I'm so frustrated with this. 
And now that I know Nanashi's not even the princess, I'm just like, well, when is Nanashi gonna come back? Don't tell me you literally introduced this interesting character only for them to probably disappear for 50 goddamn chapters and for them to come back and you be like, hey, you remember this character? I'm just like, god damn it, I've waited 50 years, 50 years of Azkaban. <laughs> just god damn it. <sighs> God damn it. Tell me your thoughts in the comment section below. Do you think I'm daft? Do you think I'm just stupid? Do you feel that I'm not fully understanding any of this? Do you think I'm just dumb? Just let me know. Just let me know in the comment section below if it's just me. You know, do you resonate with any of the feelings that I have here or what? Because, honestly, even this soul shit, it's just making me want to watch Soul Eater again. It's like, you turn your soul into the weapon, it's just like, man, I just kind of want to watch Soul Eater and be done with it. Go back to a world I understand the rules and everything and how it works. Because, God, I'm just exhausted. Comments down below. Give me a like if you like this video. Like if you disliked it or clash with any of my thoughts and feelings and tell me what I did wrong in the comment section below or tell me how I'm a dumbass who doesn't understand the complexities of Kashimoto's and then just the way he's going about all this crap because you damn right I don't. Um, subscribe and hit the bell icon if you want more because I'm not dropping this series. I'm not. You know, I still want to know where it goes. It's just... I'm just very frustrated at this point. You know, Google Do's Diz Din if you want to find me on various forms of social media. I'm basically everywhere, for better or for worse. Uh, shield your eyes, children. And uh, until the next video, just remember that you need to find some balls and have an erect sword. That way you'll find your faded princess. Or whatever. I'm Deuce Diz Din, and I really need to go to bed. Bye bye.